Well, Brad, this is weird. Uh, we did the stories for all four of the main boys. Uh, I thought for sure we were done, but hey, I guess we're still going with this. Um, okay. I I'm certain this isn't going to amount to something in the long run. Absolutely not. No, we're just extras. That's what we're doing, extras. Yeah, that's it. You know, this seems oddly familiar. Guns, and later on, demons. Boys, I think we're playing Devil May Cry. <laughs> yeah. Guns, demons, and swords. Yeah, that kind of that does actually uh, just sound like a regular afternoon. By the way, quick shout out to, to uh, my buddy Tahu for getting into Devil May Cry as of late. The dude's gone all the way up through one. Uh, he's done one, three, four, and he's doing five right now. Sick. Yeah, he's been, he's been playing that by himself. You probably see on Discord, but he's been making some fucking good progress. And hello, Lightning. Oh my god, it's even the same shot of Lightning from the initial trailers. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah the, the initial trailers for Final Fantasy 13 really shook uh, 2006 gaming's uh, spear, I guess. 2006. Yep. It was that uh, long okay. until anything substantive came out. I don't think we were seeing trailers until 2008 or so, and the game didn't come out until 2010. Oh, too late. That we got the first trailers in like 06 or 07, but I could be wrong. What we saw was some initial beta footage from when it was still going to be a PS2 game in 2006 or 7 before 12 launched. Oh, I see. Okay. But nothing. Nothing concrete, although God would uh would I have loved to see what 13 would look like on the PS2. Holy crap, that would I mean maybe there you could do that if you got the PC version just downscale the graphics heavily, but yeah. Also, man, the choice between 12 and 13? Huh. I don't know which one I would rather play in that situation. You know, it's funny you should say that though, because I know there's actually a game going on here, but you know, I've never actually disliked 13. I've played it one and a half times, and I've actually relatively enjoyed it. There's one of that game that meets the eye when you actually give it a second look that isn't, ju uh, that isn't just biting at it. I don't disagree. I think the more, the more general term I would use is just boring, really. Like, some of the characters are great. Fang is a house of fire, and I love her. Um, Hope is has some moments, especially in 13-2, but he's not offensive. I like Saz. He's fun. Give the game a try now that it's on PC at 1080p or higher and 60 FPS. So we are not doing a full run for Magavichi Saika, or as Babs likes to call her, Lightning. Am I wrong? frankly... What? Am I wrong? Not really. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be playing a little fast and loose with this story for a couple of reasons, because there's one primary reason we're actually here, and everything leading up to it I think is just funny. <laughs> okay, then. So we're gonna be, uh, cutting around bits and places, trimming the fat a lot, a lot more than you've seen me do even before. Oh, man. Yeah, before you saw me cut down a nine-stage run to five or six, I don't- I think you're only gonna see two or three full stages in this run. That's why this is actually- it won't- it won't be for you guys on YouTube, but for us, the way this is edited, it's listed as a double feature. A double billing, if you will. <laughs> well, I, I do gotta say, I am I am very curious how the story for this faction is going to play out, given that, you know, every single character we've done so far, their good route starts when you recruit Magoichi and nothing else. So, you know, <laughs> this will be interesting how the, the, the key faction goes. So already I've cut out the first two stages, I think. Holy shit, that was before smooth, she that, smooth adding then. Uh, before she comes to a conclusion, because Magoichi uh, can uh, can do one of 2.5 things. She can either join with the Western Army, which is Mitsunari, or she can join with the Eastern Army, which is Ieyasu. And I went with the Western Army because the end result becomes a lot funnier that way, I think, actually. <laughs> Alright. But also, you know, she's just talking down to him the whole time. She kind of talks to Mitsunari like he's a child. <laughs> 
That is going to be exceptionally hilarious. So it's really funny like that. Also, she has the most different gameplay we've yet seen, and that's because she wields uh, her own arsenal of various firearms. So she is entirely projectile based. And if you're thinking this look that she looks way powerful, it's because this is my second time having to do this, so I was having none of it. So I actually ended up turning it down from hard to normal. Oh, I see. Even as I, I, I do wish the 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 woman who does have the guns in the uh, ancient uh, samurai setup would have probably had a little more stopping power to them. Honestly, she's probably should oh, have no, just packed as much punch regular gameplay. Oh no, she is actually still very strong. It's just that I didn't have the patience to do a hard mode run because with the extra damage the enemies can take, it adds like a third to uh, to your overall game time. Damn. So I was like, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm kind of sick of this. Because initially, I've had to re-record a couple of things for this run. You wouldn't know it. Is, uh, that is initially, every time I recorded something, I recorded it on the highest difficulty available. And I plan to keep doing that so long as there are no further difficulties with any future boss area games we do, too. And we already did this in the past as well with Yukimura Legend. So this was ju this was purely for time saving, and w when we get to the point of time saving, that's also where we get to editing and cutting. So at that point, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, honestly, I do not blame you whatsoever on that front. There, there's some some times you just gotta draw a line in the sand and be like, you know, I like showing off for the audience, but if it's gonna be off screen, whatever, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> and there's a point to be made because this is Capcom and they're kind of fucking stupid. This is not Devil May Cry Three Vanilla. Normal means normal, easy means easy, and hard means hard. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually being played on the medium difficulty, not the easy difficulty. <clears throat> when I get to these later runs, most of what I'm keeping in is whenever characters actually have direct dialogue, or a reason to be in certain places, still cutting out the obvious filler stages. So, I feel the need to ask this because I've been looking at it for the last five minutes or so. Is she actually wearing shorts in the second costume? Uh, let me because get Because her normal outfit, again. I'm pretty sure, is... I thought she was wearing full pants or something. Uh, she, I don't think so. I don't... Yeah, she's wearing shorts. Huh. She's wearing, like, Laura Croft shorts. I just thought I remember her like wearing pants in her regular outfit, called. but I could be misremembering that. She wears long boots and a skirt that's open at the hip, but uh, no, she wasn't wearing actual pants. In 4, you can get a costume where she's wearing a cowboy outfit that has pants. <laughs> Very on the nose of that one. Yeah. yeah, the costumes in 4 are great, even discounting the DLC costumes. Yeah. So the way Magoichi pl generally plays in this game, uh, it's definitely much different from the psychic you might, uh, you probably, well, I don't know, maybe the audience is familiar with this, my audience anyway, but the general audience plays much differently than what you might have in Samurai Heroes, where it's, that, that psycho, no, wait, no, I'm thinking of Boston Mooney, fuck. Oh, I guess it kind of holds true here, anyway. Magoichi and, Masa. and, uh, Basra and the, the Samurai Warriors and the things is completely busted. This was a lot more balanced, um, I almost... This gonna sound strange. I almost feel like her, even her gameplay is always referenced to Resident Evil. Not the guns, yes, obviously, no. but like the way she wields them. Like it's it's very linear and like slow. Oh no, she is just straight up Jill Valentine, even without the costume. Also, I forgot to mention it before, but it's really funny. You might be looking, thinking, what the hell is all that wood on uh, on her, her leg and her knee? Uh, all of, this is her joke weapon. All of her guns are made of chopsticks. <laughs> oh my god, I only just knows that fuck. <laughs> well, uh, her primary, her handgun, her sidearm is made of chopsticks. You, you can't really do that for things like her, uh, her revolver is. Like her shotgun, or her machine gun, or her rocket launcher. Yeah. Uh, every single, uh, face button and combination of buttons pulls out a different gun. And does uh, diff does different move sets. Hmm. With try uh, with square, she just uses her revolver, the sidearm, 
with triangle, she pulls out a sawed-off shotgun and does slow, uh, what the hell are they called? Frag rounds? Yeah. With four, with a forward triangle, she does a rush with the shot, uh, with the shotgun. With R1, she throws out grenades. L1 and triangle, she pulls out the machine gun and, and turns into a stationary turret that you can aim. And with R2, she gets a variety of attacks. Like everyone else, you can swap out your R2 attack. I have set to her R2, I have set covering fire. Nice. <clears throat> which which is very useful, because that cannot be interrupted. That is very nice. So I guess my ever uh, growing attempts to t draw a boss right back to Devil May Cry, because I'm going to be honest, after a while, they're basically just parallel franchises. <laughs> um, she is lady. She is... Yeah, she's basically a lady, yeah. I didn't even make that comparison before. So, yeah, the so the shotgun bit, the whole rushing forward and using the shotgun thing, It Dante does have a move like that under Gunslinger using the shotgun. Um, I forget what exactly it's I think it's just called Gunstinger or something, something silly like that. You never <laughs> use it because it's like, you don't really use a shotgun in Del May Cry for the Gunslinger attacks you get with it, but it is there. I never know if there's uses for it, but I don't think there is. Like, I dare use it. I only played Devil May Cry 5 the once. Does he still have style switching? I genuinely don't remember. Absolutely. Uh, I was actually sharing this with Tahu as well. There, There is far less changes to D to Dante going from 4 to 5 than from 3 to 4. And, you know, even more extreme, <laughs> 1 to 3. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That was funny there. I, you can juggle enemies with the, uh, with the machine gun. Yeah. Now... I, that said, I'm thinking about it right now, and I honestly do not remember if Dante still has the shotgun in 5. I feel like he does. Does he? I don't think so. No, I don't think he does. Does Nero get any other guns? No, um, that's part of the beauty of Nero's move, uh, toolkit. It's that, for, uh, because he, he was obviously originally intended to be, like, the... Right! The, the, the more, uh, the like, easy-to-access character for the games. He's He never gains a new sword or new weapon. Instead, he, like, grows around them in a weird sort of way. All right, it was only in 4 that he could swap between, uh, the, Re uh, the Red Queen and the Yamato. Uh, even then, like, you don't really use the Yamato... Nero doesn't really use the Yamato for anything outside of, like, literally two moves, and that's it. Right. Oh my god, he's got a giant fucking just a giant machete! Damn, that's actually kinda of funny oh. and cool. Right, I forgot to mention the Oh yeah, there is actually there might actually be a purpose to playing on normal after all then. So with this game, uh every character has three different sets of weapons. Uh for a total of six each. And they change their weapons uh they change their weapon depending on what difficulty you're playing on. They'll have one of t uh, one of two on easy, one of two on normal, and one of two different ones on hard. This is his uh, medium difficulty weapon, the machete, I guess. Hmm. On uh, hard, he had the sword that didn't even fit into his sheath, so that was funny. So I had to look. I'm actually looking at this on the website right now because I legitimately did not remember, and it's so weird that I didn't. Yeah, no, Dante does get the Coyote Eight back in TMC Five. What is that from originally? Uh, no, that is just a shotgun. Ah. I think it's been called the Coyote A since... 3? I want to say that's when it, start, when it started getting a name. Ooh, this is... This is funny. <laughs> also, camo, lol. Very on the nose, Japan. <laughs> right, I keep forgetting that. Your weapons are uh, pre-rendered, but not your costume. Oh my god, that's Green Shake when she fires. Jesus. This is a bit over dramatic for my liking, if I'm honest. Just gave the thought in my head. She's just constantly carrying around the um, the revolver weapons from the Resident Evil series, which are can usually the strongest weapons in the game outside of just using a one-hit kill rocket launcher. And I just feel I know that, all sorts of joy. Uh, I know the boss or characters frequently get Devil May Cry weapons as joke weapons. I'll have to actually look and see if, outside of just the Resident Evil 5 costumes, 
if characters get Resident Evil weapons as joke weapons yep. in four and beyond. Next. I will see to the annihilation of the psycho faction. Do not presume to think we can be intimidated. We find such threats to be comical. Mommy. <laughs> Okay, legitimately though, it is very <laughs> funny and refreshing to actually see someone treat Mitsunari like a bitch. <laughs> oh no, all the time she's like, uh, she's like, stop being a child. Or like, act like an adult or something. They will literally lose the war without uh, Maguichi on the side, so yeah, it's kind of justified. Yep. Why is this all so familiar? Ah, yes. It reminds me of the last time we were both under Hideyoshi's command. Back at the siege of Odawara. <laughs> it's been quite a long time since I've dredged up those old memories. No matter what you try. <laughs> Still takes me by surprise, even though I did all of this this week. I will cast you into a black abyss of unbearable pain. Yeah, so that uh that line she was just referring to. Even though she didn't exist in the second game, she was also uh, her mercenary band was also under uh Hideyoshi's employment. So they were supposed to be involved in the climax of the previous game. Yeah, I was just thinking about that earlier during that last stage. I'm yeah, I wanted to say that Maguichi is a new character for this game because I did not remember her whatsoever in two. Yep, she is brand new for three. I watch your every move. It matters not if you lack faith in us as individuals. Instead, why not put your faith into our strength as an army? I didn't feel the need to state the obvious. What other reason would I have to forge a pact with the likes of you? However, you need to put your faith into my decisions. <laughs> okay. I, I, <laughs> mm, mm, man. Spicy. <laughs> Understand, Mitsunari. <sighs> you are to fight again. Yeah, they do. Uh, they be, they kind of bicker back and forth like that a lot. It's actually very entertaining. Wait, we're actually they're actually gonna go recruit Mitsunori? Holy shit! Yeah. So what you're doing for the uh, for the middle of the route is you're helping him to recruit the rest of his forces for the Western Army before going into the final battle. Hmm. Okay. And you help do some of the talking because, you know, Mitsunari is not very good at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, shout out to him for actually uh, recruiting. Yeah. Motonari? No. Uh, Johnny. Black. The one where his damn up hand. You feel dumb. Yukimura? Yeah. Shout out to Mitsunari recruiting Yukimura as his hype man, luckily. And cut. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There are stages that we've seen a million times, so at a certain point, I'm like, okay, I'm only going to cut to the parts where they actually have dialogue with each other, or where it's relevant. Honestly, that's totally and fair. So, and so, yeah, these two have dialogue together. And for Motonari's normal weapon, you see he's got this buzzsaw thing, whereas on hard mode, his weapon is that thing that's shaped like the sun. I did find that Clash to be the most Devil Cry thing I've ever seen in a while. <laughs> Clashing weapons, this not with the actual physical guns, but by shooting a blade, and then recoiling and going back <laughs> for a swing. That is really cool. Magoichi, come along with a quickness. Aren't you the slave driver? I'm going to have to ask you to double our contract. Oh, <laughs> we're asking for a raise. <laughs> there is no dishonor in utilizing capable personnel. Should your insubordination continue, I will dispose of you. Damn, Ra raising that tension already. Mitsunari has an interesting way of talking to people he doesn't hate. And it's like he's very possessive, but you know he sort of means well when he's trying to respect people. Yeah. He just he just doesn't know how to say what he means. The, yeah, the social awkwardness of uh, Mitsunari is definitely somewhat... I'd say heartwarming, but really the word I'm more looking for is funny. 
If you wanted to boil it down to his rawest elements, I guess you could call him a Sundere. <laughs> you know, honestly, yeah, kinda. That is no longer my name. <laughs> a little more to it than that, but yeah. Your skills are as impressive as ever. I should say likewise. Quite the performance as Damn, you were not kidding. You really did trim this uh, story rundown. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we've both seen before and that doesn't serve a purpose, so I figure only show the stuff that matters. Yeah, probably for the best at this point too, considering how deep we got to play through. I think I still mostly did did this sort of thing after uh, Mitsunari. Mitsunari was the only one I didn't do any sort of editing for. Like at that point, it still sort of felt to me like, well, we're not doing the whole game, so it seems feasible enough that we could do just the main character routes without having to cut too much more. Yeah. Oh, hey, I've not seen and this then, yet. But <clears throat> oh, yeah, this is a processor attack. She uses her entire arsenal at once. Sick. And here I am just looking for the Resident Evil references. <laughs> I like that weapon, but its range of motion is very limited. Oh, the assault rifle? Yeah, I can kind of see that. But you know, if ever something felt like a Devil May Cry weapon, it would be the anchor. <laughs> the anchor that has jet propulsion and can fly. Genuinely kind of amazed it took until Devil May Cry 4 with Nero's uh, Devil Bringer in order to actually have a weapon that has a sort of like movement built into its uh, toolkit. That's the the exceeds, right? Oh, not even just that. I just mean his, his Devil Bringer. The fact that you can use Snatch with it. And it's not, oh, I yeah. know it's not a weapon per se, but it's like the closest you really get to that because there's not like, to my knowledge, I don't think there's any other weapons that really qualify as like having any sort of anchor attached to them with like a chain. No, not really. <laughs> yeah. Well, unless you this count DMC funny. DMC. Yeah, not really. Yeah, this is really funny. Anything I deem wor uh, worthy of taking is a uh, treasure unrivaled. So why not make uh, make the best use of it, or why not run it to the bone? Hmm. And she's like, "Huh, you really value us." That's a cute way of saying I love you, but all right. <laughs> So I guess I should probably ask this sooner, uh, probably ask this now because I'm trying to pinpoint a voice, but I can't quite get one. Who all actually voices Saika in the dubs anyway? Karen Strassman. Oh. Okay. She's not she's not offensive with that thing, so I think we can mostly be civil about her. She's yeah. no, um, she's no, uh, what the fuck, Ruben. Yeah, she's no anti-vaxxer Ruben, she's no sex pest Vic, so... Yeah, I guess or, being a um, Trump supporter is probably like the low end of the tone pole for shit you can do. Or, uh, what was, else was his name? Wesker. Oh, you, oh god, yeah. Seriously, never meet your Douglas. heroes, god damn it. <sighs> so this is why, uh, why I opted to do this this way, because it's really funny what's about to happen. We spent all that time, according to... Sengoku Basara Judge and the re Basara 3 anime about 190 days, give or take, before the battle at Sekigahara. We spent all this time working with Mitsunari to build up his army to fight to fight Ieyasu, only to, hmm, hey, what's that in the corner? What's she doing there? Yeah, the, you know, I this what is, that's about. Let's go have a look this at that. This has been coming up a lot in the era story mode. We're, we're going to go actually go see what's up over there at some point. Hmm. Anyway, uh, see you, Mitsunari. We're gonna go go off and do this now. Even though we helped you build your army, we're not gonna actually fight for you. We're gonna go check this out instead. This looks way cooler. No, don't worry, don't worry, Mitsunari. It'll be like a five minute detour. Nothing's gonna happen. Just a spooky looking fortress. Don't worry about it. It's, it's cool. Cool. I think you actually might have never seen this stage before. Genuinely, I want to say I have, only because I've spent so much time with you playing this game. But that being said, <laughs> it, I feel like it has genuinely been ages since I've looked at it. I know what you're thinking of, and this is not technically that stage. <laughs> oh, you, you talk. No, I wasn't. So, you were probably thinking I was thinking this is a stage with Old Snake? Not quite. No, 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 not that stage. Okay. The stage that Oichi uh, is on. 
We are the demon's the forces. Wo huh, wonder who that could possibly be referencing. The one where you have to turn all the lights on. Oh, yeah. Damn, it has been a while, hasn't it? Boy, this stage is really easy. They just leave all the bases fully unguarded for you to capture. Hmm. Yeah, a little weird. Raise the dead, huh? There's no important <laughs> dead people in this series. Unless you want to revive Hideyoshi, that'd be funny. <laughs> oh no, we've got a demon king's land. Demon King. I wonder what that could be about. Hmm. I don't know. It could be, it could be a mistranslation. I don't know. I'm not gonna look too much into <laughs> it right now. <laughs> God, that's always satisfying. Getting <laughs> the base explosion right in the big crowd. Yep. But um, no, but Nagas are so, remnants. Huh, what the hell are they doing around here? Dude, they've been out of commission for like twenty years almost. What the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, ah. man, this is odd. We got Nobunaga's remnants here. Also got his uh, very bombshell sister here. Hmm. Nah, it's probably unrelated. It's probably just a, probably just a coincidence. Who doesn't wear any pants for the record, or even a skirt? We are going to definitely see that pretty soon. <laughs> uh, they hate those those obstacle enemies, the ones that make you run at like a third of your normal speed. Yeah, that's the first time I've seen those. Damn, that's been a while. <laughs> They're in a couple of stages. They can show up if you walk into their into their magic circle. Then you start running slower. They don't actually damage you. Are the attack? It does it lower your attack speed as well. Yeah, it lowers all uh, your attack, uh, your movement speed and animation speed. Well, fuck that. Yeah, so you know, I try to run uh, right over them. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah, maybe I should mention this earlier, but sorry guys in advance if I sound a little bit more down than usual. Well, not, not down, but if I sound a little more quiet than usual. Uh, I just also came off of myself. I also just came up recently off of a uh, three-hour recording session for uh, Ghost in the Shell on the PSP. So that's why if I sound more like down that's not the right word if i sound more muted than usual that's probably the reason why less I, I, I believe less it's not noticeable. I can't see. yeah i was there you were fighting vulcan raven bloodborne <laughs> perhaps it is night huh we're a bloodborne boss this perhaps boss has some pretty night. awesome legs oh, you <laughs> stupid be. bitch the Dragon the uh, the new uh, the new fancy game out out on the town right now is Elden Ring. <laughs> yeah, clearly should have been. Uh, I'm not even that far in Elden Ring. I can't even make any topical jokes. Which I'm surprised you actually haven't bought that game yet. I have. Well, Tilla did. Oh. You probably just haven't seen me playing it because uh, we bought it on her account, and I don't have that tied to my own Steam account. Oh, on Steam you bought it. Nope, Xbox. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, we, maybe we, no. Nah, we'll talk about it later. It's fine. No, she's funny. She gives sorts of nick nicknames to people, and she called she called Magoichi a deer. And Magoichi's like, oh, oh, they still uh, there are still demon can around. Well, we can finish the job. Yeah, let's put this down now before anything comes of it later on. Yeah, let's not risk any contingency plans. And before the audience comes from Laura Bailey whispering into the microphone. <laughs> because yes. Jesus Christ, he's really going ASMR with this role. I still don't know what that means, and I still don't like it. But yeah, that's basically what it is. Three whole hours of dialogue of her doing that. Yep. Oh, no, I'm sorry, six hours. Oichi has three routes. Hmm. Okay, you knocked the demon out of her, so right now she is conscious for the first time in many years. Just pull the Jujutsu Kaisen on her. Excellent. Kinda, yeah, you broke the curse. Yeah. So she's like, wait, where is everyone? Where am I? Are all of the people... That were in the first game that haven't appeared since the first game. Are they still alive? Where are they? And how many more seconds until she gets repossessed? <laughs> Is that you, brother? Oh boy. But it's funny though. She she calls out for uh, the kid. She calls out for Nohime, uh, her sister-in-law. 
and her husband. You know, it's really, really, uh, triply tragic as the last name she calls out before getting her back sliced open is the name of her husband. Yeah. And then weird husband impersonation in the next game, but we'll talk about- we'll talk about that later. <laughs> he just eternally looking at the thigh squish enabled from the one band around her leg. God damn it. Yeah. More about that later, See, though. I, but yeah, leave it to Vic Mignon to ruin a good time. So what's funny, in a way, is that Sen uh, Sengoku Basara 3 and Samurai Warriors 3 were uh, released in America at quite literally the same time and shared some members of the, of the same cast because they were done with the same studio. So this means you have Samurai Warriors Yukimura and Sengoku Basara Yukimura, both being played by John Allen Bosch. Yup. And you had... Sengoku Basura Akachi Mitsuhide and Samurai Warriors Akachi Mitsuhide, both played by Vic Mignogna, <laughs> as he's currently calling himself Tenkai. See, you know, that's cool, I think. Yeah. Or it would have been if not for the fact that the Samurai ver Warriors versions of these characters are admittedly very boring. Did she just summon a bear and it dropped on top of him? Uh, no, that was Matsu. Oh, okay. Be because of the way the directory looked, it looked like <laughs> she was the one who, like, shot something out, and then a bear was, like, summoned on top of it. Ah, yes, I'm playing as Nagato, who, um, as red-haired Nagato, who can do both the handgun and, uh, the summons, summon the panda. <laughs> nice. Also, I, I really did just realize that. Oh, yeah, uh, Makuichi also has a charge shot. Yeah, she does. Hmm. But the only weapon of hers you can charge, I think, actually, is the revolver. Ouch. This is... Hmm. Yeah? I wonder where this is going. Either way, bad touch. Please leave this, uh, lovely woman alone. That's a fuck <laughs> no, off, ghost. that's not gonna happen. That's a fuck off, ghosts. <laughs> you can't catch me, gay thoughts. <laughs> You know, it's really kind. Of, it's really kind of sad that um, even in a game where, in context, her husband is still alive, she still has the demon hands, where yeah. she didn't in the last game where her husband is still alive. Oh my God, Sparta's back! Oh wait, no, it's 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 Oda. <coughs> Mundus. Mundus. <laughs> Damn it. He's still only in the first game, right? And DMC, DMC. Yes. Sadly, okay. they can do things with that. I was gonna say, it sort of seems like that's a concept they would have revisited by now. Yeah, I always thought, I, 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 want, I thought that for sure that, like, the demon in Phi was, like, a son of Mundus, and that would have been really cool. What the hell was that thing, but, was, uh, Yurizen. Yeah, Yurizen, that was it. I, I'm just saying, if we had Sons of Sparta against Sons of Mundus, that'd be cool. I shall take my leave. I wish to see Does... I guess, yeah, Nero does sort of count as a son of Sparta. Grandson, grandson. yes. <laughs> eh, it's all relative. Yeah. Does Dante ever explain his lineage to him? No, but I think he does mention that he's his uncle once or twice. I think it comes up. Oh, right. They, uh, right, Nero doesn't find that out until, like, the two-thirds point of DMC5. I think Nero pieces it together. Uh, once he figure, learns that Virgil is his dad. I was like... Because, like, I don't think Nero even knows point. that Yurizen is the demon half of his dad. 